My name is Steve Murray. Uh, I'm the Curriculum Director for the Arts at Havant College, uh, and I'm kind of uh, in charge of the, product, uh, of the project alongside Dan uh, Musty from Millstream Productions. Havant's Heroes started in the summer of 2013, uh, and it all came about actually due to a newspaper report uh, planning to move uh, the Havant War Memorial. Uh, there was a story saying that they wanted to re regenerate Havant High Street uh, and the centre of Havant and move the War Memorial. This caused quite a lot of uh, angst among some people who mounted, mounted a campaign to, to stop that happening. Um, and the students in college knew nothing about it. They knew nothing about the War Memorial. They walk uh, by it every day. It's opposite a coffee shop they frequent quite regularly. And none of them knew the War Memorial was there. So that got us thinking that actually it's 100 years since the start of World War I uh, in 2014. So we thought we might try and start a project in which these uh, students could investigate the War Memorial, have a look at the names on there, uh, try and track the families of soldiers, uh, and we could make a film uh, we could also make a book and we could make a website uh, to sort of record the stories of soldiers during uh, Haven in World War I. Well, what we thought is that the uh, young people know very little about the First World War. Uh, it's a long time ago now, it's 100 years ago, and particularly young people in secondary schools know very little about their local uh, history during the war. They know a little bit about the, the war in general, they know a little bit about the trenches, they may have seen Blackadder, they may have read war poetry. But what they don't know is what happened in Havant, what happened in Hampshire during 1914 to 1918. So we thought if we could trace through the names of the soldiers on the War Memorial and track them through and also look at their social history, look at their families, look at the impact the war had on people in Havant, you know, the actual women that were left behind, how they reacted, uh, we decided that um, looking at social history would be much better than looking at the war in a sort of abstract way. We, when we began, we, we set up a research group, uh, and there were quite a few names on there from uh, from Havant. Uh, so we started looking at various soldiers and what and, and their roles during the war. Uh, when it all boiled down, we, we eventually found three that we thought were the perfect three to focus on for the film. Um, one of the uh, the first names that we saw was someone called Archibald Paxton. Now Archibald Paxton uh, died unfortunately on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Uh, the Somme being you know the battle during the war that most people know about. Uh, a terrible defeat for, 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 the, uh, for the British forces on the first few days. Um, Archibald uh, was from Havant. He had uh, a mother who worked locally in the hospital, uh, which was set up at Langston Towers. Uh, and so we thought we could focus on, on Archibald and, and look very much at his story. Um, we then also uh, found someone called Ernest Dedman. Now, Ernest Dedman lived in Langston, uh, in the old mill in Langston, and, and Ernest got involved in a few battles uh, abroad and, and actually got injured and came back home and was repatriated, and he ended up in the hospital in Langston Towers, uh, the, the hospital where, where Archibald Paxton's mother worked. Uh, unfortunately, he was too badly injured and, and was moved and died shortly afterwards, so that was quite a sad uh, story. The third soldier we tracked down was someone called Major uh, Fitzwigram, who lived in Lee Park, which is actually adjacent to the college. Uh, he was quite a privileged soldier, he, he lived a very privileged life. Uh, he went to Eton, I believe, and then on to Oxford, uh, and then he became a major in the army and, and went and fought abroad. Uh, he did get mentioned in dispatches, he, he was quite brave during the war, uh, and he came back again, invalided back to Britain, uh, injured. Uh, he died a few years later from an unrelated uh, problem, I think he got blood poisoning, uh, but he, he, we thought, would be a good person to focus on, and equally, one of his relatives also worked at Langston Towers. Well, Soames War was a project focusing on the Second World War, uh, and a, a diary that someone wrote in Emsworth was uh, translated into a short film for primary school students. Uh, Haven't Heroes will be more for secondary school students to be able to engage in their in their. Uh, in, in the history of the First World War. We're also creating a website and a book as well. The book will contain uh, transcripts of interviews, kind of uh, more detail than the film can contain, uh, and the website will be available for everyone uh, to look at as well. Uh, we hope the book will go into local libraries and museums, uh, and in that way people can, can kind of uh, have this as a, as a living thing for, for, for many years to come. When we set up Haven't's Heroes, we decided that we needed three different teams. We needed a research team, actually, to get into all the research that we needed uh, that they could then give to the film team uh, and the book team. We actually have a fourth unit as well that's, that's responsible for, for the social media side of the, uh, of the project and, and the website. Uh, 
for the film team, we decided that we would need production roles for different students. And so we have Matt Hill, who's a media student and very keen to go on in, into working in the media industry, uh, acting as director. Uh, we have Holly Patrick, who is a former drama student and also is quite keen to go into filmmaking, who's going to be presenting the film. Uh, we also have another... Um, 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 we also have a number of other people who are, who are taking on other roles, camera people. Uh, we have Mel O'Brien, who was involved in Soames War, who's acting as assistant director uh, for the documentary shoot. Uh, the book team as well has a number of people working there. We have uh, Alice Bizant, who is uh, heading up that team. Uh, and a number of people from the English department who are quite keen writers. They're going to sort of transcribe interviews, they're going to write some original material, uh, and they'll put that together for the book. Uh, and we also have a number of uh, IT students involved on, on, the, on the website and the social media side, uh, particularly uh, Jordan Moon is, is, is our chief web designer, and he's quite keen on, on designing quite a nice website for us to, to use. They'll be gaining a variety of skills. Uh, the main skill really is working professionally for a client. You know, uh, students who do media and film are used to producing coursework, but the coursework is obviously for the exam, uh, towards the exam, and isn't something that, that goes to a client. Uh, when you have to work for a client, you need to be on time, you need to work to someone else's brief, you need to make sure that you do things uh, in the correct way. And having no experience of that at all uh, is something that, that takes a while to get used to. So that's going to uh, stand them in really good stead. Uh, when they get to university interviews, you know, using these kind of films and these kind of experiences are, is really helpful uh, in order to be able to get uh, places on, 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 on university courses. Uh, in terms of the book, again, it's, it's writing skills. It, it, it's being able to, to produce a book for a client uh, to a deadline, to a brief. Um, they'll have to learn, you know, the, the book unit will have to learn how to uh, lay out using InDesign. Uh, they'll have to uh, learn how to uh, be able to export to uh, industry standards. And so the whole thing should enable people to get a real good sense of what it's like to work in the real world. Yeah, hopefully. We will continue to look for projects. Uh, the First World War centenary uh, will be going on, obviously, until 1918, so it may be an opportunity to look at different World War I projects in, 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 in the future. Uh, anything that we, that we see that might come up and give people the opportunity to work professionally with film production companies, uh, we, will, we will look at doing, yeah. Yeah, it's always good to see young people getting out there and, and, and working uh, professionally and, and taking on professional roles uh, and actually taking things seriously and making sure that they're able to, to produce something that's really worthwhile, yeah.